Yeah, I, I, I've never, you know, slapped her or touched her in an aggressive way or anything like that. I, I, she would hurt me, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I have sometimes I'd say things to her. Now, why don't you think about this? I have. I know none of you ever have dealt with your spouses that way, but I'm y'all are more spiritual than I am. What does it do to a woman who's been physically abused when you're mean to them? What does it do to them? They scar them. You think they shut down? Yes. You think they defend? Yes. You think they go right back to that very spot where they were? Do you think that happens? I'm telling you it happens. So, what's the solution here? Here's the solution. Barry, stop being selfish. See, I don't have to worry about stop being mean. If I stop being selfish, me needing will come out. Amen? But we try to fix the mean. Just like in everything else around us, we try to fix the problem when the problem is our selfishness. Amen. When it is our sin. Eve looked at it and said, ooh, that's what I want. I want that. I'm entitled to that. I gotta have that. And the government ain't around to take care of me. Well, because the government, the government would have been giving everybody out. So Satan is a reality in my life. He raises his head. And I've told you before, if you think she lives with a guy that's up here, you're crazy. She lives with the human, real, sometimes saying mean things, God. And if that hurts your faith, pray for me and ask for forgiveness for yourself because you've got that deal with that because you're mean too. And you sin too. Let the church get over the fact that we're not perfect. Only Jesus Christ is. He's the only one that's perfect. He's the only one that can take me from sin to salvation. I can't do it myself. The world can't do it by itself. The world needs Jesus Christ. Today, 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 we will overcome the evil when Jesus Christ overcomes the world. We've had the Great Commission. We don't need it given to us again. We simply need to do right. And be right. Amen. And be what he wants us to be. Amen. Let me read on. Let me read on. I'm just getting cranked up. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Satan's been sinning from the beginning. But before the beginning begot, God had a plan. Before Satan showed up, God had a plan. When Satan thought he got his victory over Adam and Eve, God reminds Satan of one thing. He said, you may strike his heel. Let's talk about Jesus. He said, you may strike his heel, but he will crush your head. He will crush your head. So Satan's got that to look forward to. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let me read on. Listen to what it says. Here's God's purpose. Listen. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And that was done from the beginning of time. That was before Adam and Eve even thought about sin. That was before the creation of the world. God had already had it worked out knowing that he was giving us free will. Let's stop thinking God's doing this by trial and error. Let's grab a hold to the fact that he's got a plan, he's working out his plan, and you and I are involved in it. Amen. How great is that? That's wonderful. But we have free will. We can make choices. Here's the thing that is killing the world, that is killing us. We're choosing our choices rather than God's choices. Because yeah. we want to do what we want to do. David Aiken and Neil stopped up at my house one day. 
they were in a Volkswagen Beetle. You know what they are? Yeah. Beetle. You know, I think it was like a 68. And it had the running boards on the side. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? And the, and the roof opened up. So Ken Rice and myself, we were going down to Ken's house. He lived oh, about two blocks down. And we're going down to his house. And they said, jump on board. We'll give you a ride. Seems like a good idea. So we jumped on board. We're hanging on to the roof. We're going down the hill. <laughs> they went past Ken's house and started speeding up. We're hanging on. They're laughing. It ain't funny. We got to the high school and we was turning around in the high school and Neil thought, now this will really be funny if I close the roof. So he closed the roof. And so I'm a pretty agile athlete. Back then, I was quick as a cat. Like Muhammad Ali. I could turn off the light and be in the bed before it got dark. I was quick. Quick. I figured I got this. All I had to do was grab a hold of them. Right? I mean, the windows down. All I had to do was grab a hold of them. I went, yeah! I'm built for bouncing, folks. I bounced and slid. And I tore this arm up and this elbow and right back in. I'm talking, I had asphalt in my fanny. Went, tore my cut shorts off. I mean, it, I, was, uh, I was bleeding. And now, that was on a Thursday. On Saturday, I was supposed to play in the state championship YMCA game. We played championship game for our division. I didn't get to play. Ken didn't get to play. We were two of the leading scorers. And we had to sit on the sideline and watch our team lose. We lost three to two. Now I know if I'd have been in that game, and Ken had been in that game, we'd have won the state change. No doubt in my mind. But because I chose to get on a running board, my team suffered. Because I chose to, you can say, well, wait a minute, Barry, that was their sin. They were responsible. Yeah, they were to a degree, but I made a choice. And that's the way we deal with sin today. We say, oh, it's their fault. But sometimes the they that we're blaming is not the they, it's the he. We spend all our time blaming Satan when we've already overcome him. We say it's Satan's fault. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you've got the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I've already won because Jesus came to destroy the work of Satan. Amen? Amen? He's not saying, I'm going to destroy it. He says he came to destroy the work of Satan. Because Satan held the keys to death and the grave. Jesus took those away from him. And in taking them away, the Bible says that he led in his train, going back to heaven, he led captives free. We have been set free in him. We need to understand our position in Christ. The work of Satan has already been destroyed. We just are being, here it is, selfish. selfish. We let that rule because <coughs> one thing that the blood of Jesus Christ can't overcome, you say, uh-oh, oh, he said something. It's the same thing that happened in the garden. Your free will will cancel out what he wants to do. That's why we're a church of grace. Joe said we're a church of grace. We are. Because you see, sometimes when we get in the mess that we're in, because of our own selfishness, God will say to us, come here. You need a little grace today. You need a little mercy today. And we get to revel in his goodness. We get to walk in his goodness. But I don't always choose to do that. So I override what God wants me to have. 
No, Lord, God never wanted us to know evil. He never did. We could be today. I mean, when we think about this today, you and I could be in the Garden of Eden today. It'd be worldwide, but we could still be there. All they had to do was walk away from a tree. And you see, they had access to God, so this is what he's done. Hang on with me. Hang on with me. Don't leave me yet. This is what he's done. He's replaced the sin in us with the grace, and here it is, he's given us the Holy Spirit. Amen. To empower us to resist Satan. To say no. 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 But Barry's got to be selfish. And the Holy Spirit's saying, no, Barry. And I'm saying, no, but I mean, you know, I, it's, I'm tired. Barry, and she won't feed the feed to chickens. I don't want to feed the chickens. I want to sit here and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> The chickens don't care who come feed them as long as somebody does. But God is calling us to greater things than feed the chickens. He's calling us to, as I read earlier, He's calling us, He's calling us to do good in His name. To do righteousness in His name. The one who does righteous or does right is righteous. That's what John just said to us. And John is repeating or repealing the thought of the Gnostics. The Gnostics came along and said, hey, it doesn't matter whether you sin or not. That's what he's writing to. The Gnostics. Who created a whole religion that said, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you do. In the flesh. It's what matters what you do in the spirit. I want somebody to explain to me how I separate my flesh from my spirit. At death, it's too late. So he, let me close, or we'll talk in a minute. Let me close this. Listen. No one who's born of God will continue to sin. That means, that doesn't mean you won't, have, you won't do a sin. What that means is you won't live in sin. Okay? Those who are born of God don't live in sin any longer because God's seed remains in them, the Holy Spirit. There's the seed. Because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because... They've been born of God. You must be moved <coughs> by the Holy Spirit to listen and say, I can't go on sinning because God's living in me. Here again, it goes back to you get to choose from the tree of life or from the tree of good and evil. And every day as we pick the knowledge of good and evil, see, because that's what that really was is, didn't they become just like God in that respect? They understood what good and evil was. And what a burden that has been for us since then. <clears throat> I talk about my granddaughter a lot because she's just close to my heart. I don't think a two-year-old can grasp the concept of evil. But they can grasp the concept of, without fully understanding it, they can't grab the concept of being selfish. They can't explain it. They can't say, well, I'm in sin now. That's the whole point. They can't. There's an innocence in them. But it's our responsibility to say, Brindley, don't pull sugar's tail. <laughs> Even though she's driving you crazy. Brindley, don't bite sugar. Because <laughs> she's biting you. We say grace. Now she, she ain't caught up on all the God is great, God is good thing. But the one thing she has caught is this. Every time we finish, she says amen. <laughs> she's learning. She will continue to learn. As long as she's around her papa. And her nana, she's going to learn who Jesus is and what he does and how he loves her. We're going to teach her all those things. Nana, uh, uh, nana sees Jesus loves me. Nana was gone the other day. And she was laying down for a nap. And she asked me uh, to sing, um, You Are My Sunshine. It was not pretty. <laughs> he 
you are my sunshine. She didn't care. And as soon as I finished that, she says, Jesus loves me. So I sang Jesus loved me. It is that innocence that God wants you and I to have with him. That's, that's what his desire is. That's, that's what he wants. But if we beat her and we abuse her and we are mean to her, that's what she will grow up to be. And the evil that is in the world is because men love darkness. And the light is not shining. The light's got to shine. As the light shines, it casts out darkness. Let me finish. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister. He is not writing about earning your salvation. That's not what he's talking about. And the preachers that use this to talk about earning your salvation don't know what they're talking about. Because he's writing to, who's he writing to? Christians. He's writing to people who have already been saved. But he's writing to them that their righteousness might exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. That their righteousness may come into favor with God, not with man. See, when you're trying to earn your salvation, that's just trying to please man. When you're trying to please God, your righteousness will shine because you want, desire to please your Father in heaven. That's why we do what is right. But won't the world be a better place when you and I love our brothers and sisters? Because isn't that what Jesus said? Love the Lord your God with all that you are and your neighbors yourself. It still goes back to selfish, not being selfish. It goes back to doing right, not doing wrong. Choosing, making a concerted choice to walk as Jesus walked. We're through trying to make an ex uh, um, excuse. I'm good at that. I can make an excuse. It was a PhD. I got one. But then I'm not alone. It's time for the body of Christ to own its sin and let Satan know he has no place. To let him know he's been defeated. I heard this once. I don't know where it came from, but I love those saying when Satan reminds you of past, remind him of his future. Let him stand there. But evil will always be with us. Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree. But just by not mentioning it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists. Someone who can kill a dog and then put it on Facebook, that's an evil person. That's an evil person. <coughs> but they, they got there. They got to be replaced by the choices that they made. Brothers and sisters, you and I have placed evil. Brothers and sisters, you and I have a choice today. We can this very day choose to walk in Christ. We can choose to say, this is what we believe. That light will cast out darkness. That light will overcome darkness. We can choose to believe that he is greater than us. That the one living in us is greater than he that is in the world. He's defeated by the perfect work of Jesus Christ. I believe that. And I believe in doing so, you and I can step up. But it's a choice that we will have to make. We will choose to do what was right. We will choose to walk after him. It is the choice that we are being called upon to make this very day. So where you're sitting and where you're standing, just ask the Holy Spirit to help you. 
and then say, that's what I'm going to do. Every day I'm going to strive to do that. Because that's what God wants out of us. And in doing so, His grace and mercy will be applied in our lives and we will overcome. <coughs> and it's not easy, is it? It's not an easy process. Whoever told us that, they didn't know what they were talking about. Because the selfishness rises up. So to combat that, less of me, more of him. Jesus called his disciples to be servants. I guess what he's calling us to do. Let us strive to do that. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're the Lord and Savior. This is the moment. And if you do know him, there are things we may not be doing that, I mean, we may be doing that may not be pleasing to him. Let's just ask him to overcome those things. I, I can't name them. I don't know what it is, but let's just ask him. I know what it is for me. Today. As we stand.